Uh, okay, welcome everybody to <laughs> Dice Camera Action, our first episode of 2018. And Potentially the last episode of 2018. <laughs> it's been Don't a good, say it, that, no. It's been a good run. Um, <clears throat> so before we commence, uh, let me just say that I, as a DM, have always felt that the best conflicts in this game are the ones that the characters bring upon themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, agreed. So with that in mind, allow me to recap. The oh. Waffle Crew went to the lost city of Omu, a sunken city in the heart of the jungles of Chult, having found the Ring of Winter, which is now worn on one of Paulton's fingers. And uh, shortly after their arrival, they met a tabac tabaxi <laughs> <laughs> They met a tabaxi hunter. Uh, who had come to Omu uh, to basically enjoy a hunter's death. And he Tell led you, them... we'll get back to you. He led them through the city, avoiding many of its perils. Uh, the characters had a run-in with a gargoyle. A huge fireball went off, courtesy of Strix, which alerted the Yuanti in the city, the snake folk, were intruders present, and they closed in around you until you finally fought off several of them. It is at the tail end of that conflict that a great shadow fell upon you all, and it is the shadow of the ancient red dragon, Clouth, whom the characters last saw far to the north when they were traveling by airship. It had come to secure the Ring of Winter and add it to its considerable trove, but the party managed to teleport away, depriving it of its prize and forcing it to fly the 3,700 odd miles south to try to get it back drawn to it purely by its scent. For this dragon can smell treasure from thousands of miles away. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I have plus one arrows! <laughs> How is that fair? smelling! All right. And uh, Evelyn had put herself physically between the descending dragon and the rest of the party and uh, was talking to it, trying to basically talk it down um, uh, as it was descending upon you. And it is Evelyn's turn. No, why is it? Evelyn, no! <laughs> Get away from there! We'll be fine! Everyone else is running for cover, right? Yes, everyone else, well, not everyone. Uh, bag of Nails. It yeah. is a great day to die. <laughs> okay. It's like uh, standing on disagree. some standing on some ruined stones, you know, tensing his bow as this great lizard descends from the heavens upon him. Okay. Everybody else so, is running, I think. Uh, I am going to. Oh, you know, you know those moments when you really don't want your character to do something, but they are just gonna do it anyway. Mm -hmm. mm, I hate those moments. Um, so Evelyn's main concern is just that everybody gets underground to hiding. So she's, uh, she's not necessarily like going toward the dragon. She's just trying to flank every, like everyone stay behind me. I'm going to go in last kind of thing. So her whole, she's going to like hold action dodge, um, and dialogue. <laughs> okay. Right. So she's, she's, ba she's basically going like just on the defensive, ready to defend herself if attacked, but otherwise it's just repartee. Right, and not even try to defend, just try to get out of the way. Okay. Because even Evelyn knows mm -hmm. that she cannot, I mean like, 
she didn't want to tussle with the god. She also doesn't want to tussle with the red dragon. Um, right. <clears throat> but she will if she has to. Okay. Anyway, yes. so she says something to the effect of, she knows Cloth by name, right? Uh, they're not on a first name basis, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Cloth! It's, it's so great to see you. And I'm so glad we found ourselves in the same neck of the woods. And it seems like you're real mad. And uh, I just wanted to remind you that we're real good at negotiating. And if there's anything you want, we'd love to hear about it. And we can just talk. He says, this all he interrupts out. you at that point and <laughs> <laughs> says, I have just flown thousands of miles from the spine of the world. And boy, my wings are tired. I thought so. Yeah. He I know. says, Give yeah, me the ring. Would you like and this can massage? end. Oh, the, ri the ring. And just to be clear, which ring exactly? Uh, as he depends upon you, you see his claws flex and unflex, and the wands that have de deployed from the tips of his wings sort of turn in toward you. And he says, the ring of winter. Oh, the ring of winter. Is there, uh, is there anything else of value we might be able to give you instead of that if we can't find it? Don't play the fool. I, I, uh, okay. Well, let me just go, um, ask them about it real quick. <laughs> I'll step and up there. Chris, I'll step up there. As she starts to back away, I'll say to, I'll say to him, I'll put my bow down. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, oh, great and ancient. I have spent a lifetime waiting to die. With the, at the hands of the likes of something as great and renowned as you. Allow this, and I'm going to start, I'm going to keep talking. Okay. Giving her time to back up. Okay. Allow me. So both of us are doing yes. stalling. We're just stalling yeah, forever. I'm actually, if you move, I'm standing right there. My bow's down, and I'll go, I'll go cross-legged. Yeah. And present myself unarmed. And I'll basically say, oh, great, Red Dragon. My entire life has been spent waiting for this moment. My kin, my people would be so proud for me to give my life. And I'll just keep talking at nausea. Okay. Giving them time to escape. All right. I like that strategy. Evelyn's real down with that. Yes, the dragon is about 120 feet away from Evelyn and about 180 feet away from the rest of the party. And now it rolls around to Diath's turn. Run. Just and you, run. Yeah, if you can hear um, Bag of Nails calling out to the dragon, you can hear Evelyn high above calling out to the dragon. You can see it eclipsing the sun. Uh, white ash falls in your eyes as you look up toward them. Bag of Nails was leading us to the entrance. Correct. He has stopped and has now seated himself on a ruin with his bow. Do we know feet. where this entrance is? You, know it's, how far some, it is? you know it's somewhere in the palace which you are just outside of. The outer wall of the palace kind of looms about 100 feet away. So we just need to get around the wall? Yeah, you know that uh, you were told that the wall is circular and mm -hmm. it contains within it a maze of inner walls that have to be navigated to get you to the heart of the palace. Therein, you believe, is the entrance. So the wall themselves is its own labyrinth. To yes. Get Where's Paul? Maybe this was a bad idea. For <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Twenty minutes? Can you? <laughs> Do you can find doors? It's fine, right? I mean, how? This is a bad move, Chris. How much? How much did I just blow this? Oh, you don't. Have know. I completely destroyed any of their opportunity to get to the front of anything? Uh, you have no way to know yet, because the dragon. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the. Uh... <laughs> DF, you, you know that. I feel like you all hate me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we'll see. Hey, we've done way worse to our own party, so don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't you worry. <clears throat> DF, you know both Strix and Paulton are going to get to act before the dragon's next turn. Okay, and they're both here with me? In the general proximity, yes. Actually, right. Strix is being carried over <laughs> Dragon Bait's shoulder right now because she basically fell down on the ground in defeat. Yeah. <laughs> He, he picked her up and slung her over his shoulder and is now following behind you. Paulton? Mm. 
I need to know what's going through your head. Yeah, me too. Uh, when Paulkin turns toward you, you can see just a flicker of blue light in his eyes. Uh, look. <sighs> look. I got this. Do you? Uh, I, 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 know, <laughs> I know you physically have it right now. Yes. I do. I got it. It's right I, here. I know. <laughs> I don't want you wearing that thing. I think it's dangerous and it makes me worry for you. But, but... I think you and I both know there's no way that he can have it. Mm. Agreed. Just so, run. so from where we are, can I see like a, a, a pathway into like these circular walls, or does it look there like we're gonna have to like run it, around? Um, you last week you <clears throat> realized that Bag of Nails was leading you to a place where the outer wall had kind of collapsed, forming this V-shaped hole that you can sort of climb over the wreckage into. Um, so you are approaching a section of the wall that has been partly destroyed and can be climbed over. Okay, so we can get in? To the, into the inner part of the maze, yes. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll tell DF while we're talking. It's like, you go. I have an idea. And no, I'm not playing the hero. I, uh, I, I do not plan to die here, dude. No one here is going to be a hero. We're just getting out. We'll be safer within the maze. It'll be harder for him to reach us and can at least block some of that fire. Right. I have I have one more thing I'm going to try before we go, but it doesn't involve anyone else but me. So you go. Just trust me. And f this is uh, something that Deeth doesn't really do a whole lot, but like just completely naturally, 100% without hesitation, he actually trusts Paulton and then like signals the party. Okay and like starts getting him over that wall with your and then <clears throat> just whatever i natural like kind of dungeon sense i have about navigating this place that's what i'm going to try to use to get people through honest good uh so you are just basically moving which yeah. means you can move your speed twice your speed plus are you dashing or are you going to try to stay close to your party uh uh i'll cutting action dash to kind of get ahead okay. just to kind of to survey uh, yeah, sir, if I do, like, even if it's just like a second or two, I'm going to okay. survey it so I can get this going somewhere. All right. Then you're able to get sort of halfway up the rubble that's in this collapsed section of the wall, pretty much right up to the wall itself, or, or pretty darn close. And as you kind of peer up over the rubble, you can see that the interior walls, like the outer wall, are curved. It's like entering through a hole in the edge of a round maze. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, the interior walls are the same height as the outer wall. Uh, so there is basically, a, looks like a curved passage that you'll be entering that wends its way deeper into the palace. But you're not really close enough to use your dungeon sense yet. You're not in the maze proper. Gotcha. Okay. And you turn around and you can see Dragonbait is following you with Strix over the shoulder, but Paulton clearly is not. Uh, and uh, it is now... <sighs> Strix's turn. Strix, you are currently being carried, um, so you don't have to. Tr you don't have to use movement at all. Are you doing anything else? You're just staying limp. Um, once like she's realized that they started running, mm -hmm. at least yep. she'll just like <laughs> like you can let me yeah. go. And because I you're over, run. you're because you're over um, Dragonbait's shoulder. You are actually looking back toward Paulton, and getting farther away from him, and also getting farther away from Bag of Nails and Evelyn. Oh, okay. Um, well, I know. I also know that Paulton got that snake gift, so he can't. He can't be killed, technically. Um, You'd still get knocked the f out and then have it just taken away. I don't know. That's true. That is that is true. But I'm I'm trying to figure out who can be killed. Evelyn can be killed. Well, is there I'm, a certain amount of damage that yes. someone could do that would negate the yes. can't die thing? Because yeah, I'm pretty sure it, he auto stabilizes. But if you are reduced <clears throat> to your negative hit points by yep. an attack, you will die instantly. Yep. Regardless. So not so safe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot about dying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so back to you, Strix. Okay. Um. Before before we like get away from him, mm -hmm. is there any way that like I could just like slap it, slap Paulton and just death ward him? No. Okay. He's still in front of me or too far back. Yeah, too far back. You'd okay. have to basically br use your action to break Dragonbait's grapple. 
or Misty, Damn it, or Misty Dragon Step, Bait. or use a bonus action to Misty Step out of Dragon Bait's clutches next to Paulton and then touch him. But then I can't get away from him. <laughs> well, yes, you can, because if you Misty Step, it's a bonus action. If you touch oh, okay. Paulton, it's an action, and you can still use your movement. Okay, perfect. All right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Misty right. Step out of Dragon Bait be like, I'm sorry! <laughs> All right. He stands there, yeah. carrying nothing. This would be like, because uh, I heard Paulton. I'm like, Paulton, don't die, please! And this death ward him. <laughs> All right, Strix appears next to you, Paulton, touches you with some sort of necromantic effect, and then runs away. <laughs> really <laughs> fast, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Clutching her hat to her head. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, we're not okay! <laughs> Kick, kicking up her heels, yeah. Yeah, and she's going to try and catch up with DF after that. Okay, like, well, okay! <laughs> she's farther back than she was before. Um, okay, and uh, so that's Strix's turn. Now with Death Ward on, uh, do you want to tell Nate what that does, just so? Yes. Um, so Death Ward, it's a. Let me, let me read up. I actually don't have my cards for Death Ward. I should have brought it up last time. So pretty much what it is, uh, the first time that, that you would drop to zero hit points as a result of taking damage, the target instead drops to one hit point and the spell ends. But if the spell is still in effect when the target is subject to an effect that would kill it instantaneously without dealing damage, like power would kill or something like that, the effect is instead negate against the target. So you pretty much can't die. Yeah. For, that, first time. for that, that first time. Right. Yeah. So I have that stacked with the... Uh... The, the the snake gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. I'm feeling all right. Feeling all right. Uh, after she does oh. that, um, uh, Waffles, by the way, is bolting uh, off in the direction of DF as well, just so you all know. And I know. I slapped her on the butt and okay. said, get! And we come around to Paulton. <sighs> okay. I look up at, what's the dragon's name again? Klauf. Klauf. And we 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 both speak. Uh, we can communicate, right? You and the dragon. Yeah, you yeah. can hear it speaking common to Evelyn. Okay. So, I wanna. I'm gonna call up to him. I'm just like, my dude. My dude. <laughs> <laughs> He attacks like, immediately. <laughs> it's like, look, I know what you're here for. I hold up the ring. Yes. Like, you want this, right? Yes. I'm like, you and I, we both want the same thing. And I think with how much I've attuned to the ring, and how much, or rather it's attuned to me, I think we could work together with this to get the same thing. I'm gonna try and persuade him to not kill me with that, if I may. Sure, uh, you can make a charisma persuasion check. <laughs> and I'm, uh -huh -huh. I'm going to give you disadvantage because okay. he really wants the and he doesn't like being called my dude. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, oh, man, without this advantage, I would have been a nat 20. Oh. So if Nate 20 shows up? Yeah, yep. Right. yep, Nate 20. Total 25. Okay, that's really good. Do, 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 do. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you'll know how the dragon responds momentarily. Uh, but... You, you do sense that the dragon heard your words and internalized your words and is thinking about your words as it descends down upon you. Um, and in that moment, before the dragon gets to take its action, which is the next action, um, actually before the dragon gets to go, bag of nails, uh, do yeah. you want to do anything on your turn? Can you just lay out where we are here, physically speaking? I mean, I, yeah. I assume that he's not taken, he has not taken very much interest in my begging to die on this day. Uh, he is somewhat <laughs> fixated on the ring. That seems to I be an all-consuming thing about that. Uh, but you, do, you are certainly aware that he is attuned to and listening to everything and seeing everything that's happening around him. In fact, you can see his eyes sort of rolling in his skull and doing kind of a mental inventory of everything on the ground that's moving 
faster than a snail. Okay. So he, how far away is he from me right now? 180 feet. In the air, straight, straight up. Above. He's, so he's basically above all of us. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you have action if you want to take it, or you can continue to try to draw him with the, the dulcet tones of uh, your tabaxi voice. I get no sense that that's working. <clears throat> uh, you, you get the sense that you are competing with Evelyn now and Paulton now for the dragon's attention. Sure. Um, okay, I'm going to break off of this trajectory. Okay. I'm going to take, I, I have female, female, feline agility. Yeah. I also have female agility. <laughs> um, and I'm going to take a double move and okay. I'm going to try to lead us to the front. I'm going to change tactics. Okay. Going over, I'll, I'll stay high and flipping in and trying to lead us to the mouth of the Okay, so you're basically going with Diath and the other fleeing party members and, uh, yeah. and rejoining the fleeing group. Actually, how far, how far is, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, you asked for basically <laughs> a lay of the land. Um, Diath and company, the, ed the edge of the palace wall is about 100 feet away from you. And okay. that's kind of where Diath and the Albear and Dragon Bait and Strix are all headed. And, right. Uh, very close to you, like about 20 feet away and a little bit below you on the ground, is Paulton with the ring, and standing next to him is his little construct companion, Simon, um, who sort of tightens his hand around Paulton's other hand that he's not holding up at the dragon. And then uh, Evelyn is above you, about 60 feet high. But as you move toward the fleeing party members, Paulton and Evelyn are going to get farther away from you. You're going to leave them behind. Oh, man. It's OK, just run. Uh, okay, I am going to, uh, I can't. Okay. Yeah, okay even is using one of her little hands to sort of wave the party below her, just like, <laughs> I, I, I think that, okay, I'm gonna strike that. So okay. My instinct to live and want to play in this campaign forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that that's what he would do. I think Bag of Nails will stay. Okay. And stay of course, and actually really want to die today. Okay. And saving my action for when he gets dropped yeah. to go down and save his body before it ah, takes off. Okay, all right. All right, so yes. I'm gonna hold my action and wait till he gets eaten. You enter a state of cat-like readiness. Yes, all right. thank you. All a little right. butt wiggle and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the yeah. tail starts to twitch. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, at that point in time, uh, coming up over the edge of the cliff, and the trees high above is a thing. No. What kind of thing? A good thing or an evil thing? Another thing. large flappy thing? Is it a, a good good thing? It is this. Oh, oh no! Oh, what? <laughs> oh. oh, oh. No. oh. <laughs> All right, this thing comes up over the trees and uh, begins to drift over the city toward the palace, toward you, and toward the dragon. When DF sees this, he's just like, are you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Strix okay. says that at the That's same fair. time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same time. All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, everybody who cares to can make a perception check. Yes. Or a wisdom check if you don't have perception. The skill. I don't know why I even bother making. Perception Bag of nails. You do have the perception check. Bag of, you have a plus seven. Just on roll your six, Anna. <laughs> okay, great. You said we could do wisdom if we don't have perception. Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, because it's the same thing, duh. Okay, yeah. yeah, 11. 11, no, okay. 19. 19. I got a four. Okay. Also 11. Okay, uh, so Bag of Nails and Diath, you're the only ones uh, who can see three figures on the deck of the ship. Uh, one appears to be near the back by the wheel of the ship. Looks like it might be a, a woman, possibly elvish or half-elvish. 
uh, hard to tell. Um, and she's wearing a, uh, um, a sort of a, a hat on her head with a feather. And then on the rigging, you see a shorter figure that looks like it might be a gnome or a halfling in some sort of vest. And then at the front of the figure, at the front of the ship, manning what looks like a giant harpoon gun oh, yes. is a tiefling. And uh, you hear the tiefling say, the two of you hear it say, we gotta get closer. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, then the dragon gets to go. Oh, no. I'm also really confused because I don't know who any of these people are. Mm, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I think I remember them. <laughs> the dragon moves or flies 160 feet on its turn. <laughs> Which will oh. put it past you, Evelyn. Uh, do you want to take an opportunity attack as it descends past you? I think you're muted, Evelyn. Oh, that was to me. Do I want to take an opportunity yeah, attack? Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing at Jared. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the dragon passes by you, Evelyn. It just. <laughs> Drops oh, past you. No, I do not take an opportunity okay. to attack. Then, uh, it, no. then it, it goes right past you. Uh, you see, it it makes some effort to like avoid colliding with you. It doesn't want to provoke an attack. Wait, is it going directly for Paulton? Yes. Looks like it's about to attack him. Um, you would consider its posture threatening. <laughs> Damn it, Chris Perkins. <laughs> Damn it, Evelyn. I think Damn. you would consider its posture threatening as my new favorite phrase. <laughs> yeah, she takes an attack of opportunity. What? Okay. All right. Can I give her inspiration to get a one? I have my own inspiration. I'm going to give her anti inspiration. <laughs> Whatever that is. Inspiration. Yeah. Yep. Um,. I want, I want to make it look like an accident. I want to, like, bump it <laughs> with okay. my axe. Uh, well, make, make the attack first. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's bad. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's 15. Okay, that oh, does so you not... completely. He doesn't even feel it. That, that, uh, <laughs> hey, don't! Uh, that just, that probably just sort of bounces um, off his scaly Hide. arse. And, uh, well, she did it kind of half-heartedly too, because even uh, she knows you it's can a make bad a, idea. You can now make a deception check to make it look accidental. Can I make a per? That's persuasion, isn't it? No. No. You're, you are deceiving the dragon. <clears throat> okay. Okay, that's fine. Eighteen. Okay. Um, if the dragon cares, it doesn't show it. Uh, and uh, continues uh, its descent upon Paulton. Paulton, as this giant uh, red lizard comes down upon you, uh -huh. uh, uh, you see it kind of uh, flex and open its claws. It's at that uh. point in time when the ring um, intrudes upon your will and tells you that under no circumstances must be the dragon must the dragon be allowed to take it. Oh my God. It will not, the ring says, be consigned to oblivion in the dragon's horde or forced to heed the will of a creature as mighty as that. Oh, you, on the other hand. <laughs> you, on the other hand, are much more malleable and controllable yeah. and uh, free-ranging than this dragon is. Just I uh, understood. All right. Uh, and then uh, the dragon is going to land on top of you. Oh, you, you mean uh, you mean next to me? Uh, like one foot on either side of. It, its claw actually comes right down on top of you, uh, and it makes an attack roll against you. Oh, good. Um, uh, which is going to hit. Hmm. Um, Plus thirty-two. And, uh, but instead of trying to damage you, it just basically comes down and just like scoops you and a big chunk of the ground out and up in its claw. 
So you are stuck in its claw with big heaps of dirt and moist plants all around you. Uh, it's like, whoop! And Simon is still holding onto your hand, so he's kind of <laughs> in the claw as well. And the dragon just holds you up in front of its mouth. Uh, on that, Chris. Yes. And that, that's domain. when the cat-like reflexes of the Faxi kick in. Yeah, I'm going to jump on its back. I'm going to try to jump on its back. All right. Um, uh, so Because he's going down below me, correct? And I'm up high. Uh, it's a big dragon. So uh, even though you're high up, it's still like jumping onto the back of a jumbo jet. But I'm going to, it's got a tail that you can kind of run up to get up there. Yeah. So uh, I'm hey, going to have you. Cats gonna... never fail. <laughs> 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 but this is D&D where failure is always an option. No, um, this is D&D with Chris. <laughs> however, uh, you get to make an athletics check. Uh, oh, your, athletics. your plus I'm four. You, I'm going to tell you my role was a four. OK. All right. Well, um, that's an eight. But I feel, I feel like whatever I'm doing, and I'm doing it with style and grace. Yes. Well, not with grace, um, but with yeah, style. Uh, yeah, you run up the tail, and then it sort of flicks you no. off. Fair no. Um, but like a cat, you just sort of land on another perch nearby. Okay, good. Still high? Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, it, sort, it actually sort of tossed you up in the air, so you can actually land yeah. higher than you were. Um, Everyone was supposed to run. All right. Uh, let's see. The dragon technically has other actions, but there isn't really anything else it wants at present. Nope. Uh, that said, it is going to activate its frightful presence ability, um, kind of let out this deafening roar, and I would like... Uh, I'm already afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know what's hilarious? I was complaining that like at next level, I don't really get anything cool. The only thing is that I make it so the people around me can't get frightened. Yeah. What a lame thing! That'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's gonna it's gonna hold off on that for the minute. Um, it's not gonna do anything else. It's got what it wants in its claw. It's gonna wait to see what Paulton does next, and it is. Do 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 do. Let's see. It is Evelyn's turn. Mm. Well, I guess that I see that this is Paulton's plan, and she just apologized to Paulton for not trusting his plan last time. Mm -hmm. So she's going to try to trust him, but no way is she leaving. So she's going to try and be close to him to aid him with her aura, and she's going to cast... Something helpful. What will it be? Um, she's gonna cast. She's gonna cast aid. Aid? On whom? On Paulton. Okay, so Paulton, uh, who is the recipient of many great boons this session. He's going to do, like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, um, so you, you... But I do cast it at third level. So, Paulton, your hit point maximum and your current hit points go up Listen by... Listen to his glee. Go up by five. If you're casting it at first... No. No, you're casting it at second Three. level. Three. So yeah, it third, goes up by level. ten. So they go up by... Yeah. yeah. No, so. that'd be additional five... Oh. So you slot above second. Yeah. So you, you get 10 Enjoy. hit points. 10 hit points, Paulton. Cool. All right. Um, and Paulton, now that you can sort of see the, the dragon's mouth through the uh, dirt in your eye, uh, there are tremendous ripples of heat coming out of its mouth as it speaks. But it is now Diath's turn. Diath, you are over at the wall of the maze. About a hundred. And to clarify, sorry, to clarify, I did get close enough to him so that all of my aura stuff can happen. So ten feet. Okay, okay. so you're, you're right up next to Paulton, basically, and the claw of the dragon. Hi. All right. Just oh. hanging oh out with you. Uh, oh Diath, in a day, you see your, you see Paulton and Evelyn in in close proximity to the dragon at this point. Your other party members are scampering toward you. Bag of nails, uh, after a frantic attempt to scale onto the dragon, got flung onto a ruin and, um, 
uh, not too far away from the dragon. The, that blimp airship thingy is drifting ever closer to the dragon. And you see that harpoon gun sort of being angled downward. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I see Paulton just gripped. He's in the grips of the dragons along with a big chunk of the earth that the dragon just ripped up out of the ground. Yep, and he told me he had a plan. Yep, he did. He's still alive, so it's working, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I, well, never thought I'd be happy to see an Acquisitions Incorporated logo so close by before. All right, so for where I am, can I make... the biggest logo kind, you've ever seen. Can I make any kind of discernment on this maze or how to get through it or a general direction or survey like a quick path through it? Do you think it? it might be easier if you climb to the top of the wall? I'm going to do that. Okay, make an athletics check. All right. There are lots um, of vines clinging up the wall, so it's not a hard climb. Uh, yep, and I have second story work, so it's yep. real easy to do. Super duper. Just athletics? Yep. Uh, 13. Yeah, you scamper up to the top of the wall, uh, grabbing onto ivy and handholds. When you reach the top, from the top of the wall, you can see that sort of mazy layout before you. And I will allow you to make an intelligence check to um, to see a path. Okay, just maze. intelligence? Yep. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, 14. Okay, you think you have quickly determined a path through the maze. It is a long and winding path but it will get you to the center where you see from up here the crumbled down ruins of what used to be the central domed palace. <clears throat> right. And if I believe there's a faster way to get there, but the only thing that's in the way is a single wall, I have a tiny horn on my belt that blasts when tooted. So if I believe I can use that to destroy a wall to get us there faster, that is the path I take. Okay. You think you can divine a path that will get faster with the aid of the horn. All right, and then with that, I like return right to the party. Uh, uh, this tower. Def- you will, you'll, you'll be stuck up on the wall because you basically okay. used an action to divine a path through the maze. I got gotcha. you. So you can shout down to your friends. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll start pointing them in the right direction. Okay. At the same time, I am still just staring at the, the Paulton. The, the paltrication happening right now. Paltrication. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, excellent. Good round for Diath. Strix. Oh, God. We can't leave. We can't leave them. No. And you, by the way, you obviously recognize the battle blimp 100 feet above you. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I, I also, do I see, I believe it was Tweed, Hibner, yes. and... Yes. Hibner, <laughs> Hib, Hibner, the tiefling, is on the gun. Tweed is on the rigging. And uh, I think her name is Alondria. Oh yeah, it was Alondria. Um, yes. She is. She is the. She is captaining the ship, navigating the yeah. ship. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with them. So. You did spend a lot of time <laughs> with them. You got to know them pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Alondria. You miss Scubby Hornswallow, the gnome who was killed, though. Yeah, that's right. Whoops. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and actually, there... actually, Tweed will probably wave at you. Oh, okay, I'll wave back at. I'll wave back and point at the dragon, like, please kill. Please, just point that one. Yeah, yeah, he shouts down at you and he says, we're going to kill it, don't worry. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> Evelyn's like, what did they say? They said they were going to kill the dragon? She's like pointing at that, like trying to be like, dragon, look at that instead of pausing. <laughs> um, is there, how far away am I from Evelyn? Uh, you are probably about 60 feet away from Evelyn. Perfect. Um, okay. So before I continue, I'm going to do the same thing I did before <laughs> and Misty step next to Evelyn and be <laughs> in the death ward <laughs> on Evelyn. Okay. And then just take off running. All right. Now she's flying, so you just sort of fall to the ground after you cast the spell. I have my spell. I have my broom, so I can. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna yeah. you're gonna broom over to her, cast the spell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so broom I, away. Yes. Got yeah. it. So I'm a mist. Well, actually, if I have enough, if I have enough in action to get close, well, I'll misty step and then broom away. Yeah. It's easier if you. Thank just... you, but because I love you, I must insist that you run. It's probably easier <laughs> if you broom there and back because activating your broom is an action. 
Got it. Okay, so that's okay. what I'm gonna do. Okay. So I, I then I really fast like, ah! and then just like, death warden. I'm like, ah! And then yes. So like, Evelyn, you get you get drive by touched with a spell. And there's <laughs> and the screaming is happening at the same yes. time. Yes. And I hear it from far away. Like, ah! yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this broom billowing smoke sort of veers off. Away. Dragon at that point with Strix on the back. Oh, uh, that screaming Doppler effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, that's Strix's turn. Uh, Dragon Bait is just making, following DS directions and going into the palace along with Waffles uh, that he's sort of goading along. Every time Strix takes off, Waffles inherently wants to run in her direction. Oh no! So Dragon Bait is just sort like... of hemming her off and blocking her off and trying to get her going where she's supposed to. Uh, it's a full time job. Paulton. Strix is like, I'm not leaving again. This is fine. I got everyone. Paulton, you see <laughs> past after doing something to Evelyn. You are caught up in the dragon's claw. Um, mm -hmm. The dragon will look at you and says, go on. Whoa. Um, I'm listening. Charm is up. Leave us alone, puny one. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I agree with them. It's like, yeah, the grown-ups are talking. <laughs> um, so I'm going to tell him, since the ring has attuned to me, it has become much more powerful. And if I were to give it back to you, it would only be a fraction of what it's capable of now. And I want to try and deceive him and trick him to... Go ahead and make a deception check. Right. Uh, 21? He says, nice try. Oh. Okay. Can he I... He says... I've done my research. I know more about the ring than you can possibly imagine. Trust me when I say it will be safest with me. So he, so he's got me in his clutches, but I'm in like one claw and with a hunk of dirt in his clutches, right in front of your face. He's holding you up, right in front of his face. Now, am I like super grappled or is it like making like a cage that I'm standing in? You're kind of in a, a clump of dirt. You are technically being uh, grappled. You can break or slip out of the grapple though with uh, a skill check. If you... <laughs> you, have to, you have to beat his uh, strength athletics check. Which... So he didn't buy it. Okay. Um, so then I guess... Yes. My follow-up question mm -hmm. is, how does flesh to ice work? So you cast it on a creature, and if they fail saves, they, they begin to turn into ice. You saw Artis Simber do this to a white dragon up in the glaciers. He turned it to ice. It didn't turn to ice instantaneously. It sort of mm. gradually became ice after failing a sequence of saving throws. Those okay. would be, by the way, constitution saving throws, mm. which for a dragon of this size would not be hard for it to make. Fair. Um, okay, how far up from the ground is he holding me? Oh, about 30 feet. That's not too high. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, would you say it's relatively soft snow below me? Uh, there's no snow, but there is a thin oh. layer of ash on the ground, and there's sort of a, a pit of mud under you where he tore the ground up out of and is now holding you above it. Okay. Could I try, with the ring, could mm -hmm. I try and spawn a spike growth right where I am to see if that'll like break his, break his grip? Let me check the spell. Let's see how it can be cast. Do, 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 do. Spike growth basically creates ice spikes. I just want to check to see what they have to be on. Mm -mm -mm. It has to be on the ground. The ground. Mm. And the, the dirt this is technically... around me that is, not, that is from the ground would not right. qualify. Correct. Dang it. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. 
fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I just? I'm gonna try to just cone a cold right into his face then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Chris's yeah. reaction. You see, it. you see, Chris is gleeful. No. <laughs> you see Paulton's plan unfold before your eyes, <laughs> <laughs> and your jaw just sort of, uh, <laughs> as this blast of hold just sort of hits Cloud right in the eye. Um, oh my okay. God. Uh, We're at Plan D, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my dude. <laughs> Because he has you, I'm going to say he has disadvantage on his saving throw to get out of the way of the spell. Thank you, merciful Christmas. <laughs> yes. Uh, Even though he knows it won't do any good. All right. Um, he still, even with his lowest roll, beats your save DC. So he sort of quickly, when he sees you activating the ring, he sort of turns the claw away so that your cone kind of only brushes up against him. But roll the damage. It's 8d8. Eight, okay. eight eight. He'll take half of it. Okay. <laughs> Remember yeah. that damage. He'll be weakened for next time. <laughs> yeah. My dude. <laughs> My dude. <laughs> just, just get him. Just get him. Just get him to drop you. That's right. I love how Strix just planned for this to go sell. It was like, oh, okay. Uh, okay, so that would be uh, half of thirty six. So eighteen. Oh, oh, oh. Don't yes. don't don't kill him all at once. Yeah, a few icicles sort of catch him on the side of the grill and on his ear. And uh, you see some frost form on his scales and next to his eye, uh, but he uh, didn't take a ton of damage. It doesn't seem to have a huge impact on him. He's a big bag of hit points. And uh, he holds on to you, however, and his precious ring. And uh, that, that concludes Paulton Seppa's turn. Now, uh, Simon will just hold on to you. That's all he's gonna do. He's, sta he's staying with you through thick and thin. He's latched around your leg. He's a good boy. Yeah. Yes. Paulton is reflecting on his life mm -hmm. <laughs> and says, you know what? That was <laughs> okay. Bag of nails. Yeah. Chris, how close is the is the blimp? So the blimp is slowly drifting downward. It was over a hundred feet away when you last saw it. It's about a hundred feet above you and getting lower by the minute. Okay. It's trying to angle itself. It's trying to come down so it can be within closer shooting range to the dragon. Am I, does it look like it's gonna do a charge with that big uh, ballista? Well, I mean, it's got the ballista. Is it it's, gonna... got, it's, got a, it's got the big spar on the front, but it looks like it's right. actually taking aim with what appears to be a harpoon gun on deck. Now this harpoon gun is huge, and the harpoon that's mounted to it looks like it's, it must be about 16 feet long. It looks okay. like a harpoon designed to fight dragons. It is at that moment, however, that you see the gnome on the rigging. He does right. something like he unties something, and then this long ladder, this rope ladder drops down the side of the ship um, almost all the way to the ground. Okay. I am going to do this. I'm going to, uh, what side? I know this sounds weird. Am I on the same side of the dragon as the rope is coming down, or am I the yes. other side? You're on the same side. So as I'm going to take my move action to get to the other side of him. Okay. And then I'm going to hit him with. I'm going to distract. I'm going to try to distract him with a lightning. I have um. I have the uh, lightning spell, lightning arrow. Yeah. So okay. it's going to. I'm going to attempt to distract him away from the incoming attack. Okay. Uh, make an attack, and then uh, your lightning arrow will add. Uh, do you remember how much extra damage? Yeah, it's full. I think I believe it's forty-eight. All right. Like, I'll look it up, but let me let me double check that. Um, Lightning arrow. Forty-eight. It is forty-eight, right? Okay. Yep. And half damage on a miss. Okay. So I roll the fourteen, so it's twenty. Uh, it's twenty-six to hit. You are going to hit the dragon. Nice. All right. Now someone can do it. 
So he's it's it's not good. us. So roll roll I damage and then at it. roll damage and oh, add four d eight. Throw one. Eight, 14, and then uh, eighteen, and it's it's down. It's been damaged, so I have mm -hmm. a plus d eight for colossal. That's right. Um. So that's 24, and then I get yeah. the... For those who don't know, but Col uh, he has the Colossus Slayer feature, which means he deals Ooh. more damage to uh, big, big creatures. Good news, we brought you a Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. 35 damage, lightning. Did you say 35 or 45? It, it's 35. 35, that's ferocious. Okay, uh, when you sting him with that, you definitely get his attention. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> Just like you wanted. Today is a good day. <laughs> and actually, I will make a check to see if he holds on to Paulton. That's it! Yes! Uh, okay, uh, that shock causes him to unclench his claws. Paulton, <laughs> you and Simon and this big pile of dirt fall down into this mud hole. <laughs> can I can I react and try to like catch him or cushion his fall? Um, uh, in fact, Paulton, I'm going to have you make a dexterity saving throw. Okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh, you get to add oh. uh, you get to add five. Cool, that's much better. Uh, so, uh, Sixteen. Okay, you're able to kind of land in the soft mud and let it break your fall uh, so that you don't take any damage. And when you look next to you, you can just see Simon's legs sticking up out of the mud and just sort of kicking <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> yeah, so when you do, like his lower half is just a big kind of mud ball, all this mud dripping off of him. Good boy. But he, but when you do, you're he's just sort of hanging up, sort of side down, and he, you just sort of look down at his face, and he looks up at you and just gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> we live for another few seconds, son. Yes, and then this huge yeah. tail goes <laughs> around you oh, um, as the creature, the dragon, turns to see what the source of its pain was. Uh, yeah, and the dragon looks at you, bag of nails, and says, weren't you over there a second ago? <laughs> I was. Now I am your greatest enemy. Fight! Not for long. All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, next up is oh, that was bag of nails. It is the acquisitions Inc. of Limp's turn. Uh, yes. it, it drops Get down. It uh, drops down to about a height of sixty feet. Uh, and then you see the tiefling on the gun uh, take aim with the harpoon, and the harpoon. <laughs> Launch forth. You can do it, Hemner! <laughs> and misses the dragon completely. <laughs> no! I said you can do it, Hemner! It, it flies over and it sort of takes a chunk out of this uh, old ivy covered obelisk about 50 feet past the dragon. And then the obelisk just sort of teeters for a second and falls <laughs> with a huge thunderous thud into the ground shattering on impact. And uh, you hear Hibner say, I killed the obelisk! <laughs> no! Tweed! Job! Tweed, help me reload! And Do you then have he, a true strike on that thing anywhere? He hops down off the harpoon gun and searches around for another piece of ammunition. And the blimp is done. Um, and meanwhile, the, its uh, ladder, its rope ladder, is sort of dragging across the ground. Um, nearby. And that's it for it. And it is the dragon's turn. Klauf uh, will look down upon Bag of Nails. And... Oh, boy. Breathe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bag of Nails. Um, you, you could not fathom that fire could be this hot. Make a dexterity saving throw. No problem, bro. 13 plus 9. So 22. 22. Excellent. That does not save against the dragon's breath no. weapon. And now I have to roll damage. Oh, the, whoa, no. I, th I think at some point you can just stop rolling. Yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you really, you know... Today is a good day. 
Oh, just to clarify, dude. he's he's definitely not within 10 feet of me, right? Just, no, no. Just, okay, <laughs> just making sure. All right, you take 91 points of fire damage. <gasps> now remember, you ate a seed from a nature spirit during the last game that gave you fire resistance. No, that was poison resistance. I stand corrected. Oh, yeah. No, you burn. All right. <laughs> I was so excited for just a second. Yeah, so you take 91 points of damage, and this huge, big column of flame erupts I, from its mouth. It, and I'm surprised to still be standing. Yeah. And I give him a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see all the feathers on Bag of Nails have sort of burned away, and he's just this sort of blackened, fire-scorched cat uh, standing in this swath of burnt, annihilated ground. You can see that the stone behind him is <laughs> melting. And Bag of Nails has just never been more aroused in his yes, life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. But based on Elon his current, is impressed. based on his current well, appearance, that. you don't think he could survive another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but the dragon, after the smoke clears and the flame clears, the dragon kind of gives a strange look, like, what? <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, that's it for him this turn. And. Next up is Evelyn. Evelyn, you just saw this huge cone of flame, and it goes for hundred, like over a hundred feet off in a direction, engulfing buildings and plants and everything else. And then you see uh, both you and Klaus kind of stare in amazement as the screaming cat man uh, stands before it. Evelyn is like, it takes her a second to like shake off her amazement and impressedness, but she says, Price the Thunder, it's a miracle. <laughs> Let's go. Palton, before she does anything, yeah. she wants to ask him a question. Do you have to mention door? Can you get yourself out? Yep. That right. was the plan. <laughs> Evelyn just goes. Okay, goes in what direction? Toward Dieth and Strix. Okay, toward the palace. Got it. All right, so you boogie, and you get over to Diath and the others, no problem with all your movement. Uh, Diath. Yeah. You're on the wall. You can see away from you now, uh, <coughs> Paulton lying at the foot of the dragon in mud with Simon and uh, Bag of Nails defiantly trilling um, his war cry before the, the big reptile. Yeah. Uh... So I, I know I can start leading people, uh, but do I, I? I believe that Paulton could probably catch up. I know he's got tricks; he can probably catch up. Like I don't okay. think I can get so far ahead that he would get lost in the maze without us. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, with that, um, I'll just descend back down okay. off the wall and start as fast as possible sprinting forward and getting everyone through this maze uh, to this this tomb entrance. Okay. As, as much as that we can. Excellent. Um, it is Strix's turn. You're on your broom. Still screaming. Yeah. <laughs> Where did you want to go? Um, I am going to be following. I'm following DF and who? Where's Waffles and Dragon Bait behind me? Or they are they with the same? DF. Okay. Um, yeah, I will catch up with okay. them. All right, and with and with Evelyn. So and with Evelyn, you, yes. DF, Evelyn, and uh, uh, Waffles and Dragon Bait are all sort of in a clump now, entering the maze of the palace. Okay. Following DF's um, directions through the palace. I will broom up to DF and use my last death ward. <laughs> all right, DF, you are touched with a death ward spell. Uh, Dragon Bait and Waffles will simply follow along at this point in time. Uh, now that they got a wall between them and the dragon, they feel dra dragon bait feels a little bit better, and his scent changes. Uh, and then we come back to Paulton and Simon. Okay. Right. So, uh, do, I, do I see where everyone was running to? Yeah, you sort of look back. You're lying prone on the. Well, actually, you're sort of sitting up <clears throat> after pulling Simon out of the ground. You're up on your knees. And you can see your party member are fleeing into the palace about 100 feet away. Okay. Can I just please grab Simon and Dimension Door right to him? <laughs> yes, please, can, he you says. Can, you, please, can take, you can take one other creature 
Uh, so that would be Simon. And mm -hmm. your Dimension Door, I believe, has well sufficient range to get there. It's like 400 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a massive range, so you're you're good. You you Dimension Door, and you are with your friends. Just show up. Hey, guys. <laughs> so how are we all good doing? Good plan, Paulton. You good. That was a great plan. Good plan. You, you, you come what better in my yeah. head? You come tumbling through an aperture and just sort of tumble down the wreckage of the stone wall to your friends and then boogie uh, with Simon running behind you. Uh, okay. At the end of your action, the dragon is going to take one of its legendary actions, which it hasn't done yet. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Sounds, that doesn't sound good. That sounds wonderful. Do not want. Yes. Is he going to tell us the story? Uh, no, you see uh, yeah. that it seems to, while not taking its, not taking one eye off of Bag of Nails, just turns its head slightly, and Bag of Nails, you can just sort of insight or divine that the dragon has this sort of uncanny perceptiveness of its surroundings, and it right. seems to be taking stock and listening to the footfalls of all the creatures that are now currently moving away from it and counting them and ascertaining exactly how far they, they are away, away from it, while at the same time gauging the proximity of the balloon. Okay. So he knows it's there. He, he knows everything. And uh, he, he looks like a very canny opponent. You see that now that you're really, really close to it, his flesh through, between the scales has all of these ancient battle scars. Uh, and uh, he... is done. And so it is your turn, Bag of Nails. I really wish it wasn't my turn. <laughs> That's how we feel every week. <laughs> um, where am I? Am I at his, am I like under, in his underbelly? You are right in front of him. He, you're, when you look straight up, you see his head. Um, so you are as close to it as you can be without being actually under it. <sighs> okay, I'm going to grab my bow, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say something profound, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day to die. I'm going to unleash another lightning strike. You get him. Yep, so you're standing right there. His chest is right there. You're <laughs> All right, make an attack roll. <sighs> it is my it's like Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent. Uh, it is my honor to be your foe. Pay attention to this moment and never forget. Bag of nails! 11 plus 12 is 23. Hit. Nice. All right. <laughs> Bring on the damage. 10, 14, uh, 15. And then he turns, as you're shooting him, he says, bag of poof. and then you shoot him, he's like, ow! <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh when I'm counting. <laughs> oh my god, four twos, 20 uh, 21. All right, well, that hurts him. Yeah, you, you, that um, arrow just zaps right into his body. And then I'll, I'll, um, I'll do like backflip, 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 and, and be right in front of his mouth. Okay. You know what I mean? He's so like... I, I, I shoot underneath, yeah. and, flip, 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 and then I'm right in front of his mouth, and I'm like, I, I'm waiting just to be... <clears throat> sort of a come at me, bro, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Does uh, Paulton see all this? Uh, yeah, in the corner of your eye as you descend down into the ruins with your friends. I think, I think fondly of the dimension door that was just used without me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's well, funny Evelyn... the ancestors calling me is what this moment is. Yes. Evelyn wouldn't have left, except she relates to the idea of a warrior being like, this is my time to go into the light. So she's watching this with like moved tears, but not like sad tears, more like proud, beautiful tears. But not sure. real but not real tears, because she can't cry. Dang it, Chris. <laughs> as, uh, as You're right. I describe my emotion completely internally with no external features. As, as, as uh, Paulton's running and sees all this, he just like says to himself very lightly, just, Good kitty. <laughs> Keep running. All right. Um, as you pull away, Bag of Nails, you are surprised when, uh, let me just double check something here before I open my big fat mouth. 
eaten in one fell swoop. You're surprised when the dragon says, cool, bro. We can be dudes. Let's be yeah. friends. Yeah, let's hang yeah. out. Uh, you are surprised when there is a flurry of rocks that fly up over your head past you and start to pound, pound the dragon. It's like this hail of rocks, a volley of rocks just launches over you. And each rock is only, you know, about that big around. Um, and if it were to hit you, it would probably knock you unconscious. Uh, but they just sort of bounce harmlessly off of the dragon's scales. Uh, but it looks terribly annoying uh, for about six seconds as this flurry happens. And then out of the weeds around you, you see a bunch of small little creatures that look like they are made of tangled vegetation. And they've got these sort of little top knots of vegetation on tops of their heads, and they charge the dragon with wooden spears and start to stab it in the feet. Jeez. Having no effect on it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> but the dragon is sort of looking around, and there, there are about 25 of them. And four of them run in front of you and stand in front of you with spears out. Like they're Aww. going to protect you. Oh, that's awesome. They're dead. Yeah. And then the dragon Ooh. takes its tail and just <laughs> knocks, about, no! knocks about 10 of them off into the bush, into oblivion. And it is um, the, bl the balloon's turn. You can see up above you a bag of nails uh, behind the dragon, the big red balloon. It's, the ship is kind of turning in a weird way, uh, like maybe it's not meant to. Uh, right. And you can, oh, see, no. you can see a, a tiefling and a gnome struggling to reload the harpoon cannon by themselves. Oh my gosh. And it is the dragon's full first turn. Uh, it is now going to use its frightful presence. And uh, when it exudes this supernatural fear, all of the little creatures around you scatter and flee back into the ruins, except for one standing right in front of you, and he's just there with trembling oh. spear. Oh, he's so scared he can't move. Wicket! Yeah. And uh, the rest of the dragons, oh, and I need you too as well, Bag of Nails, to make a wisdom saving throw. Not my strength, I fail miserably. Okay. Uh, then you are overcome by the frightful presence. You are frightened for one minute, which means, mechanically, uh, that you have disadvantage on all attack rolls while the source of your fear is present. Copy that. All right, and, uh, and you, can't, you can't move closer to the dragon than you already are. Okay. But at the end of each of your turns, you'll get to repeat the save to try to end the effect and overcome your fear. Okay. Uh, until then, oh, and I have to make saving throws for the ones on the balloon as well. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you hear shrieks of panic on the balloon. And that's it for the dragon. Shrieks of panic. Except, no, it actually has a move action. So it is going to take to the sky. Do I get an attack of opportunity? You do. You're at disadvantage <gasps> because you're frightened, but you do get your attack of opportunity. So roll okay. 2d20 and take the lower result. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. Um, I'll go with my. Hand, I'll go hand to hand with my claw. All right. Yes. Uh, I rolled natural one. Okay. Yeah. No. You. You, you make a vain. You make a vain attempt to scratch it with your claws, and then realize that's a horrible idea. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, I really just do natural. <laughs> and uh, then it takes to the sky. Um, Damn it. it will leap uh, and fly uh, 80 feet up, and uh, it is going to be pretty much right next to the balloon. Actually, a little bit above the balloon when it's finally finished. Oh, they're going to be so mad. <laughs> it's gonna, fine. Then it's going to see if it recharges its breath weapon. All right, and then we come to Evelyn. Uh-huh. <laughs> um... I'm going to cast a spell, I think. I mean, we're just running away into this maze right now, right? Correct, correct, yes. You can do nothing except flee. I'm going to 
hold action to cast a spell if we become attacked. Can I do that? Um, not really. Um, okay. Not, not unless you're just going to stay here. If you want to move and stay with your friends, you've got to keep up and use some of your movement, which means you're taking Okay, never mind. Which means you're taking I'll just your leave. Turn. Okay. And All as right. a bonus action, I will say really annoying, happy, encouraging things. Okay. D DF, you're trailblazing, following the path that you've charted in your head. Uh-huh. Do you want to do, do anything else? Is everyone accounted for? Uh, bag of nails is not accounted for. Right. Everyone else is. Okay, yeah, uh, just c continuing that trail. Okay. I'm, I need to get us out of here. I need to get I'm just round. One, I have to. And two, it's like the safest place we can be from a freaking right. dragon. Make a perception check. Okay. Um, which All the while, I... Evelyn's like, isn't it great? He just wanted to go into the light, and it was really beautiful, right? We didn't leave him to his death <laughs> like he didn't want to. He wanted to, right? Because he wanted to go into the light, you know? Eyes forward, Evelyn. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm trying to pick a d20 that won't let me down. Uh, perception, you said? Yes. 23. Great. As you are moving through the ruins, uh, you are aware enough of your surroundings to know uh, that slithering out of some of the rubble around you are snakes. Uh, vigilant guards that you believe could be, maybe they're mm -hmm. ordinary snakes, or maybe they're Yuanti in shape-changed form. Mm -hmm. But you... It's okay, we're poison-resistant. Yeah. Okay. You catch the movement as you rush forth, uh, blazing your trail. Are they moving in such a way that it looks like it's going to prevent momentum? No, um, they're not big enough to impose themselves in any way uh, upon your path. They just sort of crawl out of the ruins as you are, as you and your friends are passing by, which suggests that you've gotten their attention. All right. Um, I'm going to at least point said snakes out to Strix. Okay. Do, Do with that information what you will. Strix will... to snakes. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it is Strix's turn. Uh, okay. So you point the snakes out. And she's just You're like, like probably... oh, snakes may, may, or may or may not be Yanti. I don't know. Uh, Gotta move. Uh, she's on her broom. Well, if, she, if there's snakes, I can fireball some of them. Yeah, you'll have to drop the fireball in the midst of your party, but you can do that. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you're like, snake, she's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, They're just harmless little snakes. Yeah. What is their saving throw? Oh, sorry. My spell save DC is 16. Okay. And so, yeah. All right. Uh, you engulf four snakes total. Two succeed and two fail. So give me damage. 29. All right. Uh, and that's uh, 14, 14. Okay. Uh, they are all scorched by that, but much to your surprise, uh, none of them are killed. Oh, what? They're not normal snakes. They are not normal snakes. Oh, what a surprise. What? What? Ah. All right. And then, <laughs> then they assume their true forms. Uh, not normal snakes. <laughs> and they, they basically turn into these guys. Yeah. Ew. Everybody. Good to see you again. Uh, and uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. And, but that is their action on their turn. So that's all they can do is assume their true form. And next up is Paulton. So we're running in these. Yeah, you're running through this maze, and then suddenly these snakes turn into snake men in your midst. And they're both, all four of them have taken damage from Strix's fireball. But we're all still running, yeah? Yes. You are now, they are now among you. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try and... Does fairy fire work on multiple targets within a range? I believe yes. But See, up to me. Yeah, each object in a twenty foot cube. Yeah. So that would get them all. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. All right. So they all begin to glow with a blue, green, or violet light, your choice. Uh let's oh, go. They, they actually get a saving throw. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um 
Okay, two of them are glowing and two of them are not. Okay, they are glowing blue. Okay, glowing blue. All right, guys, I don't know, do something. And the good thing is, while they are glowing, um, attack rolls against them have advantage. So there's that. So two of them are easier to hit because they've got fairy fire glows around them. Fight and, the blue uh, ones. Yep, and you and Simon continue moving. Uh, and then bag of nails. We're back up to you. The dragon has gone airborne. You are standing in a scorched path of ground, 80 feet below the dragon, which uh, is... Uh, and uh, uh, the rope ladder just sort of brushes past your nose <laughs> as you're standing there. Um, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast uh, cure wounds at second level on myself. Okay, good call. Eight, right? Yep. I need another two, by the way, just so you know. Two yeah. three. And don't forget to add your um... a caster ability. Yeah, yeah. Which is what for a ranger? Uh, that would be wisdom. Uh, it's wisdom, so um, it's plus three. Okay. Um, All right. And then with my move action, I'll take my um, my feline agility, <clears throat> yeah. which is basically a double move, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make my way towards the, uh, the where the party went. Okay. Yep. All right. So you follow across the ground, bounding after them. Uh, you don't see them at present. They've gone into the walls. Uh, and have disappeared from sight, but you head off in that direction. And uh, if you double move, you'll get almost all, most of the way to the wall. Okay. Moving, th moving through ruins as you go. Uh, while that's going on, the blimp uh, is still trying to reload. And uh, Bag of Nails, you're the only one who can hear that the blimp crew, and it seems to be only three of them, yelling at each other. Uh, oh, to try no. to get the harpoon gun loaded. In fact, they've had to take the dry, the the navigator off the wheel to get her help to try to stop this harpoon. Oh, so the ship is just kind of turning <laughs> and listing through the air uh, oh. uh, to the point where it's basically its back end is dragon right now, and the dragon is just sort of looking at it with a wry smile on its reptilian face, uh, and uh, you hear the dragon say, I always like this ship. <laughs> uh, um, and then it is Cloth's turn. He did not recharge his breath weapon and Frank didn't care about the ship. So he leaves the balloon spinning around helplessly, uh, flies around it, and proceeds to fly over the palace walls. Uh, no! Knowing exactly where you guys were headed based no. on his tracing your footsteps. The previous round. Uh, you see again his big shadow pass over Bag of Nails, pass over the crumbled wall, and the head of the reptilian dragon appear over the edge of the wall, flying down upon you. Uh, and it veers off, swoops, and bodily throws itself up against the wall to knock it down on top of all of you. Oh. No, 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 so no. I would like all of you to make <laughs> dexterity saving throws. Everyone's within 10 feet of me, so everyone yes. gets plus five. Yes, everybody gets plus five on their dexterity saving throws against the wall being knocked down on top of you. <sighs> That's 15. a 15 for me, too. Okay. I'm not close enough yet, right, Chris? Uh, correct. You are out of range, out of sight, and out of danger. 22. 22. Yeah. 21. 21. Simon. Waffles. Uh. Dragon bait. <laughs> Why are you going so slow? So Why are you saying it like this? Why are you saying <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep a mental inventory of everybody who's in the party. All right. Um, okay. Uh, you are all buried in the wall. <laughs> As it falls over. They all got plus you. five too. They all added. You make sure yeah. you count I, that. I counted everybody's. Don't worry about it. You make sure. Yep. 
Everybody is buried in the wall, and everybody takes. Oops, wrong. Two, three, four. You can stop rolling now. <laughs> Twenty-two points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. Okay. And you are all uh, prone <coughs> and restrained. <coughs> Chris. Yeah. I have evasion. Okay, so that is a dexterity save. You can yes, reduce. Yes, so I took half. Yes, so you took eleven points of damage. Okay, does that? Am I still buried in all that too? Uh, well, means you don't take any, right? No, he takes half of the normal damage. <sighs> that he wrote. I'm, I don't. I don't quite have him. Or a quarter if he had made the saving throw. Um, now let me just see if evasion lets you dodge any collateral effects of taking the damage. Right. That's. I was more worried about that. Um, you know what? I'm going to say yes. You have avoided being uh, suffering the other effects of the damage. So everybody right. around you, DF, is buried under the rubble, but you aren't. With your evasion, you were able to prevent yourself from being pinned and buried underneath it. And you just see this whole tumble down mass of stone come upon them, and they immediately go into defensive postures. And the ground is not perfectly level, so some of them might be after pinned in safe little cubbies, but all you see, DF, is a cloud of uh, ash and grit as this wall falls down. And then on the other side of the wall, you see the dragon kind of rear up and sort of with a self-satisfied grin, look over the damage it has wrought. Uh -huh. And that's its turn. Uh, Evelyn, you are pinned and restrained under rubble. You can't see or hear anybody else. You can just hear the sound of like crumpling stone and cascading stone and tumbling stone over your head. Evelyn's like, like underneath. She's really strong, so I picture her in kind of one of those superhero, like super mm -hmm. strong dances. And she's like, yeah. ah! Ah. but she doesn't do anything for herself yet. But she casts Aura of Vitality instead, just boom, out from her. Aura of and Vitality. And so, so now. Um, Healing energy radiates from her in an aura with a 30-foot radius. It moves with her, and I can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura, including myself, to regain 2d6 hit points. Okay, and you need to see said creature. It does not say that. It says only what I just said. Okay, then there you go. Who would you like to benefit from this healing? Oh, that's cool. I, I, so... I think that Evelyn's first thought would be for Paulton, so it goes to him. Okay, Paulton, you can roll uh, the healing if you want to, Evelyn. 2d6. Yeah. Paulton, do you have any hit points left? Yeah. Okay. Four. So you get four more. Okay. Crying is a free action. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so miraculously, you feel uh, Evelyn's holy warmth pass through the stones, reach out to you, and imbue you with this godly rejuvenation. And you know it, you know it comes from her. Uh, and You're so, welcome! Uh, Thank you! And I'm sorry, the other benefit of the aura is what, Evelyn? Apart from the healing, anything? Uh, no, it's just that. Okay, great. It's just I get a bonus action each time to okay. heal someone with this aura around Okay, great. Uh, Dia. Oh, um, since that was a, but that was an action to activate the power, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're basically done. Um, Dia, it's your turn. Again, you're the only one that you can see besides the dragon. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't, don't, Jared. Don't do anything stupid. This is already stupid! Yeah. All of the Uanti, by the way, were likewise um, buried in the stone. You don't see oh, that Oh, well, at least something good happened. <laughs> <laughs> They're all covered in rubble. Oh, yeah. There's a big mound of rubble where your party used to be. Is, is Cloth like... On the same level as us, or is he like up on the walls? When he above? hit the when he hit the ground, um, he's on the ground. Um, so there's a big gash in the wall now where it fell in on your friends, and Clouth is taking up that gash with his presence. And you can see his head, like looking down, seeing you, 
not buried, seeing everybody else buried. <laughs> Is there... Oh, and I forgot to see if he recharges his breath weapon. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way for me to use that horn and angle it in whatever way that I can just actually blast all the rubble off of everyone and maybe have it fly into his face? Careful horn. Careful horn. <laughs> um, you can certainly try it. <laughs> I am losing it. It's too much. <laughs> oh, God. A little sand in the eye. Uh-huh. Is so is he is he like uh next to or within other walls? Uh he's next to the remains of the broken wall. Not the entire okay. the entire wall didn't fall down, but there's like this big sort of U shaped hole where the wall used to be, and there's a piece of wall on one side of him, a piece okay. of wall on the other. I got I gotcha. All right. Oh my god. Um, and you just got like this little horn, and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, Chris Perkins. I know. <laughs> um, uh, DF just uh, basically like after dodging like on his hands and knees crawling forward before finally getting up to his feet uh is basically to start running to the rubble and just like just starts panic trying to pick the rubble up off of them okay um is there anybody in particular you're heading toward based on your memory Strix. of where they were Strix. okay uh uh all right um so make a intelligence investigation check Okay. I actually have some investigation. Uh, 19. All right. You believe you know where she was buried, and you begin to sort of reach or re rummage around in there and pull some of the, the stuff away. Um, make a strength athletics check to clear away the stone above her. I, I don't have that. Or just the strength. Or yeah, you, <laughs> you, you're pretty sure you know where she is. Other than removing some small pieces, you're not able to get down to her. All right. Um, and you, and uh, the dragon says, how noble. Um, and says, here, let me help. Okay, but now it is Strix's turn. Strix, you can't hear, you can hear little like scratching rocks above your head, but it sounds like they might still be tumbling down. Uh, you can also hear the dragon because its voice is heavy and booming enough, but you can't hear anything else. Um, yeah, I will cloud myself. As you do, uh, DF, you see Strix's gaseous cloud come up out of the stones around you. Whew. And I'll I'll materialize next to next to DF. Is materializing an action? You know, I don't know. Stay cloud clouds don't burn. I think they clouds, still can. They do burn. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, the amount of damage that he does it doesn't matter what you are. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Uh. Let's do a bag of nails. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the target can enter and occupy the space of another creature. The target has resistance to non-magical damage and has advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws. That's right. good to know. I guess it ends. The target. The, it sounds like it ends when the concentration ends. So, yeah. So you can end the concentration on the spell, but okay. ending, ending concentration on a spell. I'll just stay. I'll just stay a cloud and just wave at Dia. It's All fine. Right. I can do it my next. I mean, I'm probably safer this way anyway. So I'm just like. You are almost eh. certainly safer this way. Um. All right, so I at least know that Strix is still alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see her in her cloudy state before you. She can't really talk in this form. 
It's waving. Yeah, no, it's no action to end uh, concentration on a spell, so you could end it if you want to. Um, all right, I, wa I won't for now. Okay. I will, if, Dia, if I, he recognizes everything's fine, I'm right. just like... I mean, it's, it's not fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not fine, but I definitely see the dragon, so you I'm sure not going to not be a cloud anymore. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to stay a cloud. Okay. I've uh, death warded everyone. My job's done. Uh, you st and you can move 10 feet around, so you're pretty much right next to DF. And let's see, the Wanty. Mm -hmm. Holding you all right? DF. Yeah. Um, a snake crawls up out of the stone and attempts to bite you. Great. I still like a snake snake, not a full snake man? Uh, Just back it, to snake form? Back in snake form. Okay. Actually, you can't do that. Please. All I can do is All I can do is climb out. So you see the snake, one of the snake men, but in snake form. <laughs> Crawl right. out by your feet. Okay, great. They're alive. Paulton, you feel a snake brushing around your arm and neck. Ew. In the dark, underneath the rubble. And it is your turn, Paulton. You're, okay. tra you're trapped under rubble with a snake that's crawling over your body. Great. That's no one's nightmare or anything. <laughs> I am not triggered. Yeah. Um, Simon is still holding on to you. Oh, oh my God. Oh, he's boy. alive. You can't tell. Oh, uh, Simon! My son! He doesn't, um, he doesn't talk and he's not moving right now. <laughs> but he's he's well, grabbing onto you tightly. It still, still could be good. Yeah. Um, do so i have no gauge of how far everyone is or no, you have no line of sight to anybody and no idea of how far away they are <sighs> you barely even know which way is up all right i'm going to i guess can i just try to like climb out you can. That will require a strength athletics check to basically push your way out of the rubble. Is there something else I can do that doesn't require strength athletics? Uh, not unless you can uh, cast some sort of spell. Underwear. You can just wiggle really dexterously. That can yeah, get you right. out of this predicament. Can, can I persuade the rocks to get off me? <laughs> <laughs> Is the persuasion no. thunder wave? Ooh, that's that's very attention grabbing. Sure is. Um, so is a dragon at this point. I, I so think I we mean, already have his attention. Yeah. Who's the ring? That's that's fair. Oh yeah, he probably knows where I am. All right. Could I thunder wave from where I am? Uh, you can thunder wave uh, underneath the ground, and it will radiate out in a direction of your choice. Oh. So I wouldn't be able to like make that like. Could that like push off? Could it be from like, like if you want, like you want to try to use it to push rubble off of you, kind of dealy? Yeah, yeah. If I could. Okay. Um, Were you in the rear of the party? Yeah. Just be aware there may be people in the rubble in front of you. <laughs> or owl bears. Yeah. Just like... uh, all right. I'll just I'll just try to push the thing off. Uh, with the spell or without? Without. Okay, make an athletics check. Uh, 16. Uh, you do not budge. Cool. Rocks. You I'm on chill here there. then. Okay. This is my life now. Bag of nails. You clamber up over the rubble on the outside of the wall and gaze into the maze and see the havoc that has been wrought. Um, the party, except for what appears to be D.F. and Strix, buried under a rubble, uh, and the dragon looming above them. Chris, where <clears throat> the last round I had the the rope go by me, and looking at assessing the situation, I don't have anything left. I have like a you know I, my spells are gone, and I realize this thing's well beyond me. But I could sure as hell help load that harpoon gun. You could. How far you'd have to, is that rope? 
So that rope, um, because you took off and used your feline agility, yeah, it's about really. si it's about sixty feet away from you. Oh shit! <laughs> okay. That um, said, I mean, you could try to call up to the ship and have them kind of help you with the distance a bit if you can get their attention. Yeah, I'll say, look, I'll, I'll, I'll start, I mean... They, I, I, you can see the three of them are arguing at each other over this yeah. goddamn harpoon Idiots. guy. Idiots! Idiots! <laughs> Come kick me, i help you! <laughs> and I'll use my, I'll use my, um, I'll use a double move to get back. Okay. Then Not as fast as feline agility, right. but I'll, I'll use double move to get back and get up that damn rope. Yeah, you can you can get back there and just sort of grab onto the bottom of the ladder. Yeah, and you basically, use my cat like skills. <laughs> yeah, and that will be the end of your turn. Thank you. All right, uh, and uh, then you look up and you just looking at the bottom of the boat as it turns around and round. All right, uh, the balloon. They finally get the harpoon loaded, and then they start to uh, let's see. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, Alandria will make her way back to the wheel. Tweed will cling onto the edge of the rigging and look down to see if Bag of Nails is on the ladder or not. And he shouts, he's on the ladder! And uh, the tiefling says, great. And climbs back <laughs> into the seat of the harpoon gun. And uh, they will... I'll scream, I'll scream, let me take the shot. <laughs> I am a mate. I am an archer. Let me take the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Realizing they just missed. Yeah. Take the shot. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the 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 here the tiefling shout, "Bring us in closer!" <laughs> and it is the dragon's turn. Oh, good. Mm -mm -mm. Well. Strix being here complicates things. Uh, the dragon will put his foot down on the rubble <laughs> and crunch a bunch of it into the ground as he moves into the area. And you can't remember if anything was under there or not. Uh -huh. And then he goes over to where he knows Paulton is and just <laughs> reaches in with a claw and scrapes away a bunch of the rocks. Paulton, there's a sudden <laughs> sound and all the rocks over you are instantly pulled off so that you're just staring up at the dragon. I like to imagine it was like first really bright as my eyes adjust. I'm just like, yeah. oh, thank yes. you. Oh. You just saw the sun and like bits of ash falling from the sky down upon you and then you just see that everything come into focus and the dragon and you feel its heat from its nostrils, each of which is big enough to stuff a barrel in, um, looking uh, down upon you. Ah, uh, right. Hi? The ring. <laughs> this is your last chance. And that's all that it does. Um, but it does remain vigilant to its surroundings. And Evelyn. You hear the dragon's voice from underneath the rocks. You heard the scraping of rock away from something not too far away from you. You felt the rock compact dangerously close to you. What do you do? I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh... As you can tell, yeah. I'm just going to try to break out from under the rocks. Okay. Ah! Yeah, make a strength check. Athletics, I should say. Is that a 1 or a 20 on this die? It's a 20! Ah! All right. So it does look that cool. It does. I'm like, <laughs> DF and Strix, you see Evelyn explode out of the rocky pile. The rock's flying off her. And she's like got her flying boots in a superhero stance, and she's just like like arms down like this, you know? Yeah. Like, ah! Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, now that was your action. Uh, what else would you like to do? I have a bonus action to heal. Mm -hmm. uh, and from now that you're out of the rocks, you can see Strix, Diath, and in the in this sort of hole of rocks, Paulton. Do I see Simon? You see a Simon's wooden hand and hand sort of grabbing onto Paulton's leg. Do I have any sense of how well he is? He's. It's not moving. He's just sort of very very still right now. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, like, from my point of view, everyone looks kind of like battered, but I can't tell that one person's worse off than another. Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to give it to Simon. My son! All right. Uh, he gets 10. All right, you see his little hands flex. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm, I am encouraged. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, and then one of them sort of detaches from Simon and does this. <laughs> Yay, good boy. <laughs> All right, and that's Evelyn's turn. DF. Yeah. The dragon is looming high above Paulton. Well, not high above Paulton. He's looming right over Paulton right now. You heard the words. What do you do? Oh, no. So has he lifted Paulton up, or has he just like, he, ripped, like he, kind he of revealed cleared, him? He cleared the, the debris to reveal him. He has not touched Paulton. He's just glaring down at him and telling him this is his last chance. Paulton! The dragon will add, let us yeah. end this little encounter as friends. Paulton, give it to him. Paulton, you will not give it to him. The ring is actually controlling you. <gasps> I call back. I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> All right. Uh, do you want to do anything else, Dia? After you yeah. hear Paulton say, absolutely not. And then you just, you, you both see the dragon's brow become very dire, very serious. And it, no. its eyes narrow. All right, his nostrils uh, flare. Paulton, why? I I approach. I actually make my way to Paulton, like not in like a, a hurried kind of um, uh, uh, hostile sense, but more of like uh, showing this, the the dragon that this, I'm more or less kind of giving into his demands. And I basically make my way to Paulton, and then like kind of help him up to his feet. Okay. And as I'm helping him up to his feet, I slide the ring off his the ring off his finger. Oh boy. Um, okay, uh, Paulton, you're not gonna want this to happen. So. So with so with it with it controlling me, it's I definitely won't give it to the dragon. That also includes like I actually the control specifically was don't give it to the dragon. Right, but I can take it off, right? You can. Okay. Or you can let gonna, it, be, or you can let it be taken off. Do I notice that he's trying to take it? Um, he, you can't. Uh, one character can't technically rob another character without some kind of intervening check. So, I will say that it's a sleight of hand check, the yeah, sleight of hand check versus your perception check to notice Ooh. that he's trying to do it. For starters. Okay. So make a sleight of hand check, DF. Mm -hmm. It's a dexterity check if you don't have that skill. And Paul can make a perception check. That would be an 18. 32. Okay. Eight. Oh, okay. So you don't notice that he's trying to take it. Whoa! But again, you can do things to prevent the theft just by, you know, running away or whatever. Uh, but actually, it's still DF's turn, right? Yeah, it's still DF's turn, so all you can really do, Paulton, is talk this round. I'm going to tell him. be like, I know I said this before, but I have a plan. And then, uh, you, DF, you see his hand just sort of tighten, like his fists kind of tighten and resolve, and you're like, oh, God damn it. It's like, you agree he can't have it, right? No, he can't. Did Klauf CB attempt to do this? That's a good question. He needs to make a perception check. You rolled a 32. Yeah. He has a chance, a chance of noticing. He rolled a 35, so yes. All right. So as I do that, I still clench my fist as if I have the ring. Okay, make a deception check. Oh, God. <sighs> 16. Okay. You don't think uh, he is convinced? Wait, he gets five to that, right? Tw no, he doesn't. No. It's not a save. No, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
All right, uh, you, you think that the dragon knows where the ring is, DF, despite your attempts to fool it. All right. Um, at the end of your turn, the dragon is going to use a legendary action uh, to inject itself at the end of DF's turn to use a wing attack. It will bring its wing down upon you, DF, almost like a dividing line between you and Paulton and attempt to knock you away. So okay. I'd like you to make a dexterity saving throw. Do I get plus five from Evelyn? You do. <laughs> Haha! I'm useful! 31. 31 makes it. Um, okay. Uh, so you basically duck under the wing as it comes down between you and then slashes across to send you careening across the palace. And when it passes, you're still there. Yeah. And you stand up again. And then the dragon says, your life is over. <laughs> I, I'm just like, just one moment with my associate, associate, please. No. And then I, oh. And that's where we'll stop for tonight. <laughs> no! no! You can't do no! that! No! no! I can't. Right. I can't go through another week like this. So the first person to act next week will be Strix. No, come on! That's just so not you know. fair. Um, that's not fair. And then Paulton. Uh, I had a cool plan. So, Matthew, will you be able to join us next week, perchance? Uh, it will depend on work. Okay. But if I can, I would like to. Okay. If All you right. can, please shoot the dragon with a ballista. It'll be rad. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remind me I have disadvantage. How long okay. does that? How uh, long does that go? That's gonna. We're not, actually, we're not gonna you, remind you. You should get a saving throw right now to try to break oh! it. So make a save. Can I take, can we take it? Yeah, wisdom save. What, oh, the wisdom save? Yeah. I rolled a 17. Okay. Um, the a 17? 20. Okay, so you, you actually break it. So you are no longer nice. under, under the effect nice. of, the, of, the, of the frightful presence. So you don't have to worry about that next week. You just have to worry about the dragon. All right. No, no problem. Okay, uh, so tune in next week to see how things play out with Old Snarl and oh. Bag of Nails. And until then, everybody have a great week. Any uh, any any announcements, things you want to tell the community before we break Stop off? We'll start with you, Matthew. I know uh, there's a bunch. It was funny that I'm not a big Twitter guy like you guys are. So it was interesting to see the Twitter kind of blow up for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. But Beetle and Grimm's is uh, a website that's up. I don't have my T-shirt on today. Oh, okay. It's Beetle, B E A D L E N Grimm's, G R I M. All right. Thank you. Anything else from me? As always, you can always go to the Dice Camera Action subreddit, which has been very active over the last two weeks with all kinds of crazy cool stuff. In fact, there's even things going up and happening during this episode. I don't know what they could be possibly talking about. <laughs> But be sure to go on that and uh, join uh, that community, which is nearing 3,000 subscribers on Reddit or whatever it is. And you can also join the Dice Camera Action Discord from the Reddit so that you can uh, interact with other uh, fans in real time. Or cry. Or cry. Spam that link. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll piggyback on that to say that uh, we, we all think it's real cool when you tag us on art and writing and all the cool stuff that you do for the show because we uh, get a lot of inspiration and enjoyment from that. So thank you when you do that on social media. Never feel like it's a yes something yeah. that yeah. we don't want. No, that's awesome. Yeah. We look through the tags quite often. Yay. I, um, I can't believe that we just crossed over with AI. <laughs> I like... know. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Hey, guys, bye. Thanks for taking care of this dragon. Oh. Uh... Well, it hasn't done anything yet, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally done nothing. That's about right. It dropped a ladder. <laughs> it dropped a ladder. Yay. Uh, but I mean, these guys are like they're like like zero level characters, so Yeah, they're idiots. They've got a they've like got the like, F team. They got yeah. a they got a total of about twelve hit points between them. So. Yeah. Oh, 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 also, also, uh, I put up a new video over on the Pro Jared YouTube channel where I discuss the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Well, that's a good one. So if you yeah, want to see, good. if you want to see a, a little video talking about the uh, 1983 cartoon show of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, I've got that up on my channel, which is crazily popular in Brazil, I hear. For some Weird. Yeah. yeah. There's some good jabs for us in that video. Only a couple. <laughs>
Right. Oh, man. Then if nobody has any further announcements, we will call that a session. And thank you one and all, and welcome to the new year. Yay! Yay, what a good way to start. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Thank you, guys. All See right. you all next week. <laughs>